Good evening, everyone. This is Brother Brandon coming to you live from Fayetteville, Arkansas, with another Fishers of Men video broadcast, and it is good to be here this evening. And uh, this evening, we're going to be going through um, Romans chapter 12. And um, before we do, well, before we do, let's we're going to go ahead and sing a couple hymns, and then we got got some things I gotta get out and then we'll got some announcements or at least one little announcement um, and uh, and then we'll got prayers and praises and then we'll get into the message so but before we begin with all that we'll go ahead and get into the couple of hymns <clears throat> the first hymn I'm gonna be singing from is hymn number 319 Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. <clears throat> Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. <clears throat> Amen. Now let's go to... Um, I'm kind of just winging it, winging it tonight. Um, so just bear with me. Um, let's sing Standing on the Promises. Hymn number 122, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, Through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. 
by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. <clears throat> Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. <clears throat> Anytime that we are down and in the dumps and just really just wondering what's going on, it is always good to stand on the promises of God. Amen. And uh, that's something we all need to do. Um, anyways, so announcements. <clears throat> the, the only announcement I wanted to make was um, just to let everyone know. Um, on Friday's broadcast I didn't do because I wasn't feeling very well. Um, and so I had bumped... Friday's broad, broadcast up to today, and so there was no Friday broadcast, but there is a broadcast tonight, and so there will be another broadcast on Friday, and then again on Sunday. Um, Sundays, I may have to push back a little bit later, um, just because plans have sort of kind of changed around for me, um, but to stay tuned for that, for any announcements on that, um, so I may push the Sunday night broadcast up off a little bit about an hour later. We'll see how that works and goes. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but next this next week we should get back to normal with our normal broadcasting times. Um, also, I am looking into getting um, business cards to help promote the sermon audio ministry so uh, please be in prayer for me on that I'm still trying to work some things out and kind of reorganize some things I haven't really placed an order of them yet but once I do I'll let you all know so <clears throat> I'm gonna um, get it, be getting some cards to kind of help promote the sermon audio ministry and um, I do feel that God is I do feel in my opinion, that God is using that to reach others. Uh, hopefully that there are people listening on to Sermon Audio that um, you may not usually, I mean, hopefully that, that you guys are sharing uh, this with other people. And so hopefully that there is, um, you know, hopefully the lost is hearing this. Hopefully there might be other people that might be listening to it. So please do pray for my Sermon Audio uh, ministry. Um, pray for this as well and so with that said let's uh, well that's going to be it for announcements so we'll get into um, prayers and praises um, again just pray for my ministry pray for these videos pray for uh, the Facebook ministry sermon audio ministry YouTube ministry um, pray that God will just take these videos and do with them as he wills and uh, pray that this would be a blessing toward for others uh, and a blessing to to others, Amen. Uh, and hopefully that people will come to know Christ as a result of these videos, um, and or come back to Christ, Amen. So, 
<clears throat> pray for me on that. Um, nothing has really changed, but you know, let's keep our brothers and sisters in prayer. Um, I know brother Joe, brother Joey wants prayer for for his pain, so pray for him on that. Uh, we've got fellow brothers and sisters that need prayer for lost loved ones, and um, also pray for my family uh, and those who um, do uh, listen to uh, these. Um, videos. Amen. So pray for them and uh, <clears throat> we'll pray for, uh, let's pray for each other. Amen. So with that said, um, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless this time. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this, um, for this broadcast, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you bless this broadcast. Pray, Lord, that there wouldn't be interruptions or anything that might disrupt the the, the broadcast, Lord. Pray, Lord, um, that you would take these videos and do with them as you will, not as I will. Um, I pray, Lord, that souls would might souls might be won as a result, Lord, and there there might be people that would come to know you and to love and serve you, Lord. And uh, Lord, we just do thank you, Lord, for this day. Um, Lord, I do want to pray, Lord. Uh, <clears throat> Lord, I do want to pray, Lord, um, for those who watch this, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would prepare their hearts to receive from you, not from me, but from you, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you bless the message, uh, that you give me the words to speak, that I would speak your words, not my own. And Lord, I do thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. I want to lift up Brother Joey. Pray, Lord, you give him comfort. Um, pray, Lord, for those, those who have lost family members. Pray, Lord, that you just work in their hearts and lives. Pray, Lord, that you just lead them and guide them accordingly to your uh, will and purpose and glory. And, uh, Lord, we do thank you and praise you, Lord, for your for your mercy and your grace and love. And, Lord, we do lift this to you. And, Lord, we do pray and ask all these things, Lord, in your name. Amen. All right, you guys, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And uh, we are slowly and uh, maturely making our way through Romans and uh, Romans is actually a very short chapter. Um, it's only got 21 verses in it, so this may not be a very lengthy message. <coughs> so, um, so just kind of just, you know, I just ask that you would, uh, you know, just, just bear with me. Um, it's not going to be a lengthy message, but we are... Um, <sighs> So we'll get through it. It's not huge. Um, looks like the next few chapters that we'll be going through, it's not going to be very long. Um, I'd say by the time we get to like 15 and 16, they might be a little bit lengthy. But um, other than that, it's these next chapters are going to be very uh, short. Uh, so we're just about to be done with Romans, the Book of Romans, um, and so I'm kind of praying about which way to go so just pray for me on that okay and uh, we'll go from there so Romans chapter 12 let's start in verse 1 it says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service okay <coughs> Um, um, so we see here that Paul is admi admonishing, um, he's saying that he want, uh, so what he's in, he's, what he's, what he's getting at here is he's, he's pleading with you for, for pleading with all Christians to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so first of all, <coughs> what we take of this is that we are to be a holy, we're to be a living sacrifice, okay? Holy and acceptable unto God. So, that means that you are not your own. Okay? You're not your own. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it says, What? 
Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? And in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Now let me tell you something, okay? You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Amen. Okay. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, it says, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23, it says, Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. <clears throat> okay. So Christ, last week, we talked about the resurrection. And the resurrection, if there if there is no resurrection, okay, let me tell you something, okay? If Christ didn't die on the cross, then there is no resurrection, okay? So we see that you were bought with a price, okay? Christ paid that price for you. He bought you with a price, which was what he did for you at the cross. So if... If Christ bought you with a price, then your temple, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Your temp your temple is your body is a temple to the Holy Ghost. When you get born again, the Holy Ghost comes within you and lives within you and abides with you. Amen. Now, a living sacrifice well, what does that mean? That means is that you put yourself, you say no to your flesh, and you put yourself, okay, you put yourself for the service of God. So which means that you're not here to please yourself. You are here to serve God and to please Him. Amen. Amen. Now, it doesn't say, it doesn't just stop at living sacrifice. It says holy, acceptable unto God. Don't be a unholy vessel. Because if you become a unholy vessel, an unholy vessel, you then become unacceptable. Okay? But if you become holy, then you become acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Well, I think the answer, how do you become holy and acceptable? Okay. <clears throat> the, the, well, the verse, in the next verse, it tells us, <clears throat> it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So Paul is telling you, you want to be holy and acceptable, don't, do not conform yourself to this world. Do not conform yourself to this world. Does that make sense? Which means you are to be separate of this world. Amen? <clears throat> Okay. Um, in John chapter 15 verse 19 Jesus says if you were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world but I have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you so Christ calls you out of this world. Okay? He calls you out of this world. 
You are not to be partakers and conform to this world. You can live in this world, but you are not of it because Christ calls you out of this world. Amen. If you are of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Okay? To be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you do that? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. You getting into your Bibles. Okay? On a daily basis getting into your Bibles, reading from the Word, listening to the Word, is how you renew your mind. Amen? That's the only way you'll be able to re renew your mind. Now, in John 17, 14, I have given them thy word, and the world <coughs> hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And John in verse 16 of chapter 17, it says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Amen. <clears throat> so we see that we are not to conform ourselves to the things of this world. Because Christ has called you out of this world. We are to be set apart. We are to be a peculiar people. What does sanctification mean? Sanctification, part of which is talking about being set apart for God's service. Another part of sanctification is God dealing with you and working with you on your sins. If you're truly born again here today, okay, you have sanctification cycles. We all go through sanctification cycles they're not painless they're painful at times but God is working the sin out of you he's either going to chasten the sin out of you or he's going to allow tribulation and trials to do that but Paul says in verse 1 it says that we're to be a whole a living sacrifice holy and acceptable okay if you want to be a holy and acceptable living sacrifice Paul tells you in that next in this next verse to not conform to the ways of this world it's simple okay well let me say that let me say it this way it's easier said than done we are not to conform ourselves to this world now <clears throat> there is such now you can be unholy and unacceptable okay but that doesn't have to stay that way. That can change. But Paul is admonishing, okay, he's admonishing us to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And, he, and at the end of that first verse, he says, which is your reasonable service. Amen? Okay, that's the end of verse 1. Um, and at the end of verse 2, it says, that when you renew your mind, when you read the word daily, when you guess the um, let's let's look this up here real quick. Um, thoughts and intents. Oops. Hang on a second. Let's see here. In Hebrews four twelve. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? So, with that said, it's the word of God that can renew, by reading and listening to the word of God, you are renewing your mind. Why is that important? Because when you renew your mind, okay, by the word of God, you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, perfect will of God. Amen. The word of God is alive. It's quick and powerful, quicker than a two-edged sword. Your Bible is 
the book on the face of this earth that is very much alive. Okay? <clears throat> and it's and it's what we're born again into. Because Peter says, be born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. You know that word seed, um, <clears throat> in the I think it's in the Greek. A lot of times the word seed in the Greek is is, is known as sperma, which is where we get the word sperm from. No, but but that but that word, you know, what is that? That's DNA. That's DNA. So this Bible is DNA. This is seed. Jesus said, the word of God is seed. The seed is the word of God. And DNA is the instruction. DNA is the book of life that God wrote. Guess what? Your Bible is the book of life. And it gives us life. <clears throat> and it's an instruction manual on how we, are, how we ought to behave. So when you are born again, you are born again with new DNA. You are regenerated. Regeneration, and that word is genes. Okay, genes is DNA. So when you become born again... It is by the power of the Holy Ghost that you have new DNA, which is the Word of God. And think about it. If you have the Word of God as your DNA, you have Christ dwelling within you. And if Christ dwelleth within you, how much more will He raise you up at the last day? Think about that. Um, verse 3 For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according to according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith <clears throat> Can I tell you something? Don't Think that you are something when you are nothing. Don't think any more highly than you ought to think. Okay? Don't. And by the way, when you think, if when you think more highly of yourself than you ought to, that is pride. The Bible says, God resisteth the proud. So when you think more highly of yourself, you have pride. That's prideful. And God hates pride. Um, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry <clears throat> let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth. On exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Okay, Paul is talking about how the how there are, there is one body, okay, which is the body of Christ. But within the body of Christ, there is a whole bunch of members. Okay, so everybody has a unique, special gift. Everyone has different giftings that contribute to the body. So just because you're not the mouth but the hand, don't say to yourself that you're not part of the body because you are. As a matter of fact, 
It's the very little things, it's the very little things that are probably just as important, if not more so important than the bigger stuff. Okay? <clears throat> so just because you might clean the toilets at the church, don't don't ever don't ever disregard that as well, I guess I'm not doing anything. Okay? That's not the right attitude to have. Because even cleaning the toilets at a church makes a big difference. Amen? Having a clean church makes a big difference. Um, let love be without dissimulation. And pour that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honoring preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing in, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, Bless and curse not. Amen. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what Jesus says. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. In Luke chapter 6, verse 28, Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Amen. Do you know why you're supposed to do that? You do that because you will then heap, a, you will heap fiery coals upon their head. Pray for your enemies. Do not hate them. You know, pray for Joe Biden. Pray for your political leaders. Pray for your church leaders. Pray for your pastors. Pray for those who've 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 used you. Okay? Now can I tell you something? <clears throat> when you now you might say, well, Brandon, you don't know what they've done to me. Well, I don't care what they've done to you. I've had people stab me in the back. I've had people betray me. I've had people do all sorts of things. And you want to know something? As hard as it was, I, I, by the grace of God, I was able to pray for them. And when you pray for them, okay, it's not so much their benefit it's mainly for your benefit. Do you know why? Because when you pray for your enemies, God will change them, but he will also change you, and he'll change your attitude. He'll give you a heart for your enemies. He'll give you a love for your enemies that you can't even comprehend. But when you pray for your enemies, God will do a work within you, and he'll do a work in them. So pray for your enemies. Love on them. Do good to them that persecute you. Amen. Rejoice rejoice with them that do rejoice. And re weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Okay. <clears throat> Be not wise in your own conceits. Oops, I can't even spell today. Um, Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery... Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in.
okay? Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't be that way. Okay, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Don't, listen, <clears throat> can I tell you something? Don't go around causing trouble with people. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Listen, I know people that differ and how we, that believe with me. Okay? I know people <clears throat> that we have different beliefs. You can have different beliefs. Okay? Still witness to them in such a way without having to turn them off you can still log on them and witness to them you can disagree without being disagreeable if you and somebody have a disagreement just agree to disagree cordially disagree don't fight about it don't be don't be argumentative about it don't don't worry about trying to win a battle but you need to be but christians need to be sincere when witnessing to the lost and dying world they need to be sincere and not fake when you witness to the world don't be a hypocrite. Be sincere in who you are. Because the lost and dying world will see right through you. And they will see that you are... And, and if you tell them that you think that you're good and perfect, they'll see right through that and they'll call you a hypocrite. Don't put yourself in that position. Christians, I beseech you, and I'm talking to you, when you witness to the lost and dying world, be legit. They're not, the lost and dying world is not looking for perfection. They're looking for honesty. The question is, do you have honesty? Do you have honesty? Don't be a hypocrite when you witness to the lost and dying world. You could still be, you could still witness to the lost and dying world and be legit with them without living like the world. <clears throat> Amen. Don't think for one second that you can pretend to be someone that you're not and pull and quickly pull wool over people's eyes because the lost and dying world will see that they won't buy it be sincere don't be fake don't be a phone don't be fake and phony and hypocritical you can disagree with a, with a lost person I'm going to tell you right now you can disagree with a pagan. Still maintain a biblical stance. But you could still witness to a pagan. And love on them. And cordially disagree with them. Without having to be disagreeable. It is possible. Don't be, don't be phony. Be, be genuine. Be legitimate. Okay, don't be... The lost and dying world is looking for Christians that are genuine and not fakes. That's why a lot of these atheists and pagans won't come back to church. Because Christians 
are not being genuine. A lot of them aren't. It's hurting. It's hurting not just them, their testimony, but it's hurting every. It's hurting the whole community. So be genuine. Live peaceably with all men. I'm not saying that you need to become like them to live peaceably. Okay, what I'm saying is you can still live a godly and holy life without conforming to the world and yet still live peaceably amongst pagans and lost people. It is possible. Amen. Now, we got a few more verses and we'll wrap up. It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will pay, repay, saith the Lord. The Lord will repay. Don't take revenge. The Lord will get vengeance on his, for his people. Let God deal with it. Don't take it upon yourself. Therefore, if thine, aim, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Don't take it upon yourself to, to get vengeance on people. Let the Lord do that. Pray for them. Love on them. Share the gospel with them. That's what they need. Because you want to know something? All these lost and the lost and dying world, all these people that are wicked, let me tell you something. You... All you guys that are fellow brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You were once them. You were once wicked. Okay? You were once wicked, but God saved you and God showed you mercy. How much more should you do that for others? How much more should you give someone mercy? Blessed are the merciful, they blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Amen. Oh man, I can't even get this thing up here. Go. Matthew chapter five verse seven. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If God had mercy on you. How much more should you have mercy on a, on a lost and dying world? How much more? Amen. How much more should you have mercy on, on others? Because Christ had, Christ, God for Christ's sake had mercy on you. How much more should you have mercy on on those who are lost and dying in this world. Amen. Um, <clears throat> believe it or not, that's all I had for tonight. Because that is actually all of Romans 12. And I told you that it won't be a, it wasn't going to be a very lengthy message. But okay, I do want to say this. Okay. All you guys that are lost. Okay, all you guys that are lost. If if you don't know that heaven is your home, you can know for sure tonight that if you die, you go to heaven. Okay. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the grave on the third day, 
Okay, you'll be saved. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's very simple, guys. It's very, very simple. Okay. Um, you know, just cry out to the Lord. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Amen. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. <clears throat> Ask Him to save you. Just cry out to God. Ask Him to save you. Amen. If you, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. It's very simple. It's not complicated. Amen. It's not complicated. It's simple. For all you guys that are believers, okay, I love you guys. Hey, we all, even I, even I need to, there's some areas and all in my life that I need to correct. And I'm just being real with you guys. Okay. Um, just being real. But if, if, if there's any one of you, okay, that needs to repent. Tonight is the night to get that right. Amen. And no matter what you may have done, no matter what you may have done that wasn't right, God can, the Lord will forgive you. Amen. But you need to ask for it. You need to repent of your sins. Okay. You need to repent of your sins. Amen. Um, I'm going to sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Hymn number, hymn number 54, Great is Thy Faithfulness. As I'm singing this, <clears throat> um, before, before, we sing, before I sing this, I want to just close in prayer. Okay, And we're going to sing this and then we'll close. But as I sing this, okay, I want you guys just to think and meditate on maybe is there something that, and, and look within you okay examine yourself if there's something that the Holy Ghost is working on and convicting you on tonight is the night to get it right amen so with that said let's close in prayer and then we'll I'll begin singing okay dear Heavenly Father Lord Jesus Christ Lord I want to thank you Lord for today I want to thank you Lord for this message um, Lord I do pray and ask you Lord that you would begin to work in the hearts of those who have watched us Lord Pray, Lord, that you just lead and guide, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you just have your way and will, Lord, in each and every life. Lord, I do pray, Lord, that there might be people that would repent and turn to you and repent and turn back to you, Lord. And I do thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace and love. Lord, you said that your word will not return void, Lord. And we, Lord, do thank you, Lord, for that. And I do pray and ask all these things, Lord, in your name. Amen. All right, you guys. Hymn number 54, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed it, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest. Sun, moon, and stars and the Courses above, 
Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. <clears throat> Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen, guys. Listen, I love you guys. I'm not trying to be mean, okay? You have to preach the whole counsel of God, and and uh, there's some things that I rather not preach on, and there's some things that I have to preach on. But whatever the case might be, I have to preach on the whole thing. Okay, um, I can't cherry pick the Word of God. Okay, and by the way, I don't really cherry pick anything except for a buffet. Okay, but the Word of God is not a buffet. Okay. You need every single aspect of it. Okay? When you go to a buffet, you can pick and choose what you want. But the Word of God, you cannot pick and choose. Okay? You either believe it all or you believe it not. Okay? You can't pick and choose what you believe. You need to either believe the whole Bible or not believe it at all. Amen? So... You know, I have to preach the whole counsel of God. Amen. So listen, um, <clears throat> on Friday, this Friday, I will be preaching and teaching on Romans 13. Lord willing, that'll be Friday. And, and one week from today, I don't know what I'm going to preach on yet, so pray for me on that. Um, and uh, just you just keep me in prayer on what I need to teach and preach on, okay? So... You pray for me on that. Don't know what I'm going to be praying, uh, preaching on a week from today. And uh, Friday, we will be getting into Romans chapter 13. Amen. So with that said, I love you guys. God bless you. Um, you guys have a great night. And uh, we'll see you all on Friday. Amen. God bless you guys. See ya. Have a good night.